Welcome everyone. Welcome to series 31 space architecture. I came to realize that good architecture, the kind that only fulfills the basic human needs of survival, but allows humans to thrive and develop safely and with respect can be that only when its designers and architects reflect who they design for. By diversity, for diversity. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, a very special show with very special um, architects. Uh, let me welcome Vera Mugliani. She's the founder and CEO of Mass City Design. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Emad, he's the lead architect of Dubai Metro 2020. Mr. Alon Shika, architect and co-founder of DMAS, and uh, our beloved Mikal Siso. She's the CEO, CEO and founder of CISO, and uh, that was the quote was provided by her. Um, uh, the quote was provided by her uh, from one of the TED Talks that uh, I have uh, saw her in at SSP 19 at the International Space University, where she spoke. Uh, welcome also uh, co our co-host today is Yara. Uh, today we are going to debate on following. What could our lives on board of spaceships and celestial bodies could look like in the not so far future? How to build a sustainable infrastructure for future living in space? We will also discuss how analog space architecture can influence the way we will live in space and back here on Earth. Without further ado, uh, back to you, Mika. Yeah, thank you, Yen, for this great introduction. And uh, hi, everyone. It's great to be here. It's great to see you logging in. I hope people are logging in on LinkedIn and on Facebook as well. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we go, and we'll uh, have time for those for Q&A at the end. Um, and we'll dive right in with our first panelist, which is my dear friend, Vera Mugliani. Uh, Vera is the CEO and founder and lead Mars architect of Mars City Design. She's the president and founder of Mars City Foundation, the founder and executive director for Spaceport LA. Vera Mugliani is a critically acclaimed visionary architect and urban designer. For the past 20 years, Vera's practice of architecture and science has been evolving to reach an interplanetary scale, pioneering the Mars architecture, or as she likes to call it, Mars architecture movement, uh, building the prototypes of a sustainable city on Mars while creating a STEM plus art, which is STEAM, educational influential platform, the Mars City Foundation. Her Mars City simulation is currently building in the California desert uniting the most advanced technology in alternative energy, infrastructure, mobility, sustainable life support systems, cross-pollinating with inter entertainment and art. Vera's journey was published on the UK Discovery Channel. Uh, welcome, Vera. Uh, please share your uh, screen, and I'm very, very excited to hear you talk. And the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm, this is my honor to be here today, and I'd like to share with you something I think very dearly to the heart of everyone. And it's so good to always remind ourselves that we shall send to the moon 240,000 miles away from the control station in Houston, a giant rocket more than 300 feet tall, the length of this football field, made of new metal alloys, some of which have not yet been invented, capable of standing heat and stresses, several times more than have ever been experienced, fitted together with a precision better than the finest watch, carrying all the equipment needed for propulsion, guidance, control, communications, food, and survival on an untried mission to an unknown celestial body, and then return it safely to Earth re-entering the atmosphere at speeds of over 25,000 miles per hour, causing heat about half that on the temperature of the sun, almost as hot as it is here today, and do all this, and do all this, and do it right, and do it first, before this dictate is out, then we must be born. Okay, that was, unfortunately, um, you cannot see it, but, I just uh, wanted to show that to 
because you know most of us I guess that are on the panel today and also trying to um, break into the space industry of this new era I guess is not really familiar with what the people in the 60s have been living and how space became space at the time it was a space race and it was political uh, power reasons and military reasons but here we are today and um, we are part of this new era where uh, women could be part of it and new people are working on uh, achieving their dreams in space and uh, we are here as the Mars City Design, uh, the, the platform that I created to really include all of these other diverse uh, disciplines so that space could get towards that level again and reaching Mars, but involving every one of us. So that was my opening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Uh, do you have another presentation or um, that you wanted to share uh, the... Um... Yes. Hi, my name is Vera Mulyani. I'm the founder and CEO of Mars City Design. I'm also the professor for Loyola Marymount Systems Engineering class called Occupy Mars. We are here today at the Los Angeles Griffith Observatory to congratulate the winning teams of Mars City Urban Farming Challenges 2020. They have delivered fantastic projects. You can take a look at them now. The third winner for Mars Architecture category, Mars Shambhala, by Shang Zhen Cheng, Yu Ting Li, and Chia An Ye from Tonghai University in Taiwan. The second winner for Mars Architecture category, the Molecule Research Lab by Jaslyn Goodrell from India and Los Angeles. The first winner for Mars Architecture category Sprout by Giuseppe Calabrese from Australia and Italy. The arms will be capped with 3D printed Nubian bolts with glazing, permitting natural light penetration. The plant's main source of light will be from LEDs alimented from solar collectors. The greenhouse cylinders will provide bio waste to the green powerhouse. The third winner for Mars Agriculture Engineering category is Martian Hive by Alexander von Bieler and Alekin Gottman from Bödeker Partners Landscape Architects in Germany. What can we do to also improve life on planet Earth at the ways we construct the ways we sort of respect our natural environment. So if we can get these principles right on planet Earth and we can create a system for this, then I'm sure we're going to be capable enough to, to grow a better future on other planets. The second winner for Mars Agriculture Engineering category, the Mars Colony One by Yulia Akisheva, Dudevich Alexa, Nenadich Nene, Benjamin Potier, an international the team. Greenhouse middle section. You've already seen the algae bioreactors. You can see that this could be a space for work, maybe even to relax with a book, because it's also better protected from radiation due to the extra hydrogen rich materials around one. An innovative crop selection and the first power on Mars, so it's a very exciting project for us. The first winner for the Mars Agriculture Engineering category, Justin's Food Production Systems by Justin Perkeve from Seattle. 
a total of 1,450 meters squared just to feed nine people. At a high level, we've attempted to lay out a solid engineering foundation for the entire Mars settlement program with all the future work identified as necessary for a larger team to turn this into reality. The network of ribs in a lily pad represents the closed loop system of the farm structure. The first winner for the design category, the Mars Spine by Mohammed Ahmed from Egypt. Out of solar panels, arrays, and water extraction. The farm external pad is provided with a solar panel system to generate energy out of the sunlight. The Voronoi structure of the farm envelope is provided with Himawari system of a fiber optic system that uses tracking fresh lens. The second winner for the design category, Protest by Mohammed Montazeri and Elham Mirzapur from the Arena Design Studio, Iran. The winner of the most favorite project of Mars City Design Challenges 2020 and the third winner of the design category, Barkin City by Khaled Al Laban from Dubai. That act as a main circulation method across the city. Barkin City is a unique concept to house humans and plants to create an independent plant centric community, makes it a sustainable and efficient design that could become the first city on Mars. I'm just really proud of our multidisciplinary teams that are coming from around the world to unite and to give some solutions of what it is food growing in another planet that can actually solve the sustainability issues that we have here today for our climate change on Earth. So congratulations teams. We really enjoy every creativity that you contribute this year towards the competition. I would like to sincerely thank our guest speakers. All right, I guess uh, that's enough. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, this is what have become the past five years uh, in terms of the challenges that we uh, submitted to the world and the responses that we got back really to prove this is the destination of the next steps for space and Mars. That's my all my presentation. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Vera. That was an amazing, amazing presentation of so many different uh, views on, on how to build uh, on Mars. So thank you for that. Uh, and our next speaker is from my home country, Israel, and it's Alon Shikar. And Alon is an architect, cum laude graduate from the Technion, Israel Institute of Technology. He also holds a master's degree in urban design from Bezalel Art and Design Academy. And he is an alumni of the International Space University uh, Space Studies Program of 2018, where he took part in the design of an energy production solution on the surface uh, of the moon supported by NASA and ESA. Alon co-founded the Shika Fab Studio Multidisciplinary Architecture Agency that focuses on complex urban design projects with humanistic UX and UI pragmatic and sustainable approaches, alongside with innovative ideas and beautiful designs. Alon is the co-founder of DMARS, a Mars Analog Research Center, which he designed and built with his students. He is the organization VP and leads the R&D team. His main research is about different construction methodologies and um, standardization for space habitats. He is a lecturer at the Technion Faculty of Architecture and was a crew member at the very first analog mission in Israel. So welcome, Alon. It's great to have you here. I'm very, very excited. I was also a part of uh, Alon's DMARS mission just last week. So it's very, very exciting to have Alon here. Um, and Alon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to take it uh, for a, to a smaller scale. And I'm going to uh, talk about some ideas and notes uh, of how to design habitats uh, and uh, living in space uh, volumes or uh, whatever we will uh, uh, come up uh, in the next uh, few years. Uh, so I'm starting with this image of, uh, of our habitat. Uh, this is an image of, uh, of a habitat uh, in the south of uh, Israel. You, you probably hear my uh, uh, 
my son cries there. But uh, this is an image of, 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 of our habitat. And uh, in many plays, in, in many sense, uh, it was a starting of, uh, of a new episode uh, 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 in my point, in, in, in my career, in my life, in my, in my friend's life. Uh, and I think what is, is, is the most interesting uh, uh, for us is to show and to uh, 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 explain or to demonstrate how we can actually uh, do this, uh, 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 try to, how we can uh, learn and how we can uh, 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 research uh, this, uh, the condition of living in, in space and living on Mars. So in this lecture, I will talk about, of course, our analog side. And then I will talk about uh, uh, some concept of uh, outpost uh, 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 design. Uh, I will talk about our next prototype and our future perspective uh, and how we see the development of our uh, organization. So, <clears throat> so this is DMAS, this is what we do. On the background, you see uh, three uh, uh, high school students after uh, 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 having one and, a year, one and a half year of uh, 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 training in order to become a uh, Ramonauts. Uh, uh, this is an analog astronaut in the Machtesh Ramon. I will explain it later. And what we do in DMAS is try to incorporate as, we try to com uh, 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 combine or to do, to create a platform for collaboration in the space, space realm. And especially of course, in the uh, human exploration. Uh, we try to develop as much as technology as possible, and we try to and we try to develop as much as concept or, or, or concept, but that that could actually that could that we can actually build and create in the next few years. So we started for, with a smaller scale. We started with a, a, a with a place of, of six people say for six researchers, and eventually we'll, we we want to develop a, a, a larger or greater concepts. So we are starting with the with the south of Israel with the uh, with the Ramon crater, which uh, located in the Negev desert uh, in Israel, and uh, the Ramon the Ramon crater is a very interesting geological phenomenon, which uh, uh, really it's not only uh, only about mimicking uh, uh, the Mars condition, but it's <coughs> it's try to to uh, uh, to achieve uh, the entire conditions or the, the uh, try to develop or to challenge ourselves with, the, uh, with as, as many challenges as possible uh, in the space uh, 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 challenge that, that space give us. So for example, on Mars, uh, we all know that it won't be any uh, sunny beaches there. It won't be any uh, 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 cocktail parties at the beginning, although we, we wish it, it will be in the next few years. But uh, what is, what is interesting me as a researcher is, 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 is try to think about the first step, the first humans to, to arrive there. And for, with this uh, 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 challenge, we, uh, we want to develop it step by step and make, make our uh, a prototype, make our uh, uh, analog habitat better and better. So <clears throat> we know that the, the condition on Mars will be totally uh, difficult or different from Earth, but uh, it's not only about, it's not merely about the radiation or the different uh, of uh, t uh, temperature. Uh, the, the, the atmosphere on Mars and the atmosphere on Earth are totally different. Living on Mars will be exactly like living in this uh, 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 fish, fish bowl. It will be uh, exactly the same and, 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 and try to remember how difficult it is for, for us to, uh, to make this fish uh, live in a, in, in, a, in, in a beautiful way, in a good way for him. Habitat is a term from biology. It's a term from biology that, that, that shows uh, or, or try to understand the complexity or the, all the conditions that an orga organism needs, not only to survive, but also to flourish and to uh, build, uh, let's say, a colony or, or social a, 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 a culture. And, and once, you, once, you, once you understand the, the, the complexity of, 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 of making one fish a, 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 a alive, you understand the complexity of, of making, a, let's say, six a, a researchers, six astronauts to live a, 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 a on Mars, and of course, a, a on the moon. 
And, and we see it every day. We see it in the ISS, in the International Space Station and other space station. And we, we, if you think about it, the, these stations, they are in a way analog sites as well. Imagine if we will think about, if we, we will talk about living on Mars and not having these stations, of course, we, it will be a great catastrophe. We need to have this uh, a curve of learning. And if, for me, this is, this is my, my, my task or, or my challenge, my greatest challenge uh, is to create, the, let's say the best uh, working habitat that could actually uh, support humans uh, on, in space. So now I, I will talk a little bit about our concept. And it's a concept that we took that uh, from, from this book, uh, you don't see it, uh, uh, building habitats on the moon. Maybe, maybe like that, okay, of Professor Chaim ben Oroya. And in this, in this book, he, he tries to, uh, um, let's say, break down the evolution of, of living or building in space. We are starting with the rigid structure, okay? The rigid, the rigid structure, it's a perfectly closed uh, and sealed box or container or a volume or even the spacecraft itself that lands a, 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 in the celestial body, and we know that it can it can help it can support uh, the life of the researchers for uh, let's say for a year. Afterwards, we need to have some kind of growth mechanism. We need to have some kind of inflatable or deployable uh, a mechanism that can allow the, the the habitat, the place, the volume to be to to get larger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, we want to use ISRU. Uh, 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 resources, we want to use the soil, we want to use the, 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 the climate on uh, uh, the places that we're going to uh, live. And uh, uh, maybe this uh, somehow uh, uh, reflects or, or, or suggests what, what we saw from a Vera presentation, uh, uh, when we see larger scales, we are not there. In Dimas, we try to develop, let's say, the first, uh, uh, the first capsule, the first place that humans will live uh, in space. And in a way, it's, 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 it's a niche that I, can, I, feel, I feel comfortable in. I feel that we can actually create these kind of spaces and we can actually uh, uh, develop them uh, with our collaborators. Uh, <clears throat> this is a section of, of the idea that, uh, that uh, I saw, that I, I just presented. And you see that from this, uh, uh, sorry, from, from uh, my God. From this uh, schematic design, uh, we, we switch into, a, a, let's say, a real design. And with this, a, we, with this concept, we just need to send, a, let's say, an empty volume. And the walls, we will cover them with soil in order to prevent it, to prevent a, a, a from radiation. So in this, in this smaller scale, we can actually a, a, a develop concept that we, we, we believe that we can use them in the next uh, in the next years in, in the next future. This is a, a schematic design of, of our next prototype. I will uh, <coughs> talk about it now more. And I think uh, just let me show you some. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a working uh, session. I'll show you a short movie. Just a sec. You don't see my screen now, yeah? No, you have to share it again. Yeah. Okay. Now you see it, Michal? Not yet, no. We don't see that you share the screen at all. You have to reshare it. Great. Now you will see it. Yep. No. I I see it. I see oh, Alan's see screen. Great, great. Yeah. Okay. So just a sec. You see it now? You see the movie now? It's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. It's not playing the video. No. Yeah, it's playing now. Now it's working? It stopped again, yeah. So you see the habitat from the inside, I will talk about it uh, in the slides. And we try as much as possible to create this space uh, uh, to fill uh, as large as, uh, as it can be. This is a nine meter, a nine, a nine meter in diameter. And it, this actually could fit into a, a, a space vehicle uh, in, uh, that, uh, that NASA and uh, ESA and, and of course SpaceX is developing. And so the, complex, the, the complexity of, of, of uh, designing a, a small structure uh, is, is the, the, let's say the key or the, uh, uh, the potential is inside the multifunctional uh, volumes. You see that each, flow, each area here in this uh, diagram, in this plan of the habitat that you just saw the movie, each area could, to, could act or could, could perform as 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 as, as, as a multi 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 uh, uh, use area, and also we want to think about how the the perspective of the of the people that's going to live there, that's going to work there, how their perspective could change uh, uh, each time differently. So, for example, we are not we don't want to to, to design a corridor that you just go uh, straight and you have to go back. Here we want to create a. a a, a circular uh, approach uh, and maybe an open plan approach, uh, just like in the uh, modernist movement uh, uh, in the last century. And in order to do it, uh, for example, this area could have some kind of a storage area, but in emergency, this could close and could be, uh, could act as a medical room, this area in the middle, for example. Uh, <clears throat> In order to do it uh, accurately, uh, uh, we use a, a space syntax uh, a methodology, for example. This is a, 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 for urban designers. A, 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 it's, a, it's a methodology that tries to understand the movement of people, cars, a, a pedestrian, etc., and to incorporate them into the design. And you see the much, the, the variety of colors, that means that more and more a, a, a perspective, a, a visual perspective, and of course, a walking perspective could occur a, a, when once we try, once we are trying to break a, a, and to create different areas inside our habitats. And although it's a very very small structure, it's about sixty meters, sixty square meters, a, a, it allows a, a variety of feelings. Let's say. And, and, and working and living abilities in a very, very tiny, tiny place. So I think that as architect, you, we can solve this, this volume problem once we, we, we use this urban methodology. And I think for, for, for us, the second prototype, which, which will be of course much better and much greater than the first one, uh, could ask or could demonstrate how how we can really think about smaller 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 spaces uh, uh, in space and how we can uh, make them much better than than they than than we see now in the ISS, for example. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, this is this is what we think uh, and what we want to do in the next level. Uh, this uh, uh, let's say this uh, uh, these shapes, each one of them is one unit. Right now, Alon. What? Alon, we, don't, we don't see any, any uh, image right now. Uh, sorry, why you don't see? So I will end up with the I will end with this uh, uh, with with our perspective for a, a future a prototype. This will be in in the next uh, maybe two three years. Uh, we are, of course, uh, 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 getting a lot of resources uh, in order to do it. Uh, but now uh, uh, our second prototype is under construction. Uh, actually, at, at this moment, it's, which is very, uh, we are very proud of. We are very excited uh, uh, to, to demonstrate it in, 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 in the next uh, uh, experiments that we're going to do. So thank you very much, guys. Thank uh, you, Alon. Yeah.
Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. You. I mean, I, I think people that are watching us and joining us, um, they can see that uh, also from Vera's presentation and yours, the common thing is we usually go towards deserts on Earth to build um, these habitats. And we have a, a long way to go and we have to go in, in very small steps and in, uh, in figuring out how people can first live in very, very small quarters and then eventually expand like all those amazing projects that Vera um, showed us and this kind of, uh, Alon, by the way, can you just uh, finish sharing the uh, slides? Um, and this kind of connects us to our very uh, special and third panelist, uh, Muhammad Imad, who was shown, his project was shown in Vera's uh, amazing presentation. So congratulations. Um, so uh, Muhammad Imad is an Egyptian architect with a um, Bachelor in Science in Architecture from Alexandria University. He is an AIA International Associate, Lead Green Associate, EES Associate, SCE Associate, and an Autodesk Certified Professional, currently working as a Design Manager, Stations Lead Architect of Dubai Metro R Route 2020. He is experienced in the fields of architecture and construction in a multinational environment with various kinds of design and build mega projects in the Middle East and North Africa region. Uh, I'm excited to have you here on and I'm excited to uh, hear uh, your presentation. Thank you so much for joining us and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mikhail. Thank you all. Perfect. So my presentation is actually for how to build a sustainable infrastructure for future living in space. Uh, I would like before starting to give you a quick uh, uh, round uh, in the agenda of the presentation. Uh, I will start with the famous question of will the earth die? Uh, and if so, why do we actually look up to space? And if, if, if we go actually to space, what would be the challenging the challenges that we will be facing? And from where I see biomimicry is actually one of the key uh, out of the box thinking uh, from sustainability perspective. And to do that in a space, we have to have a good understanding for the term IS, uh, ISRU. And then I will give a very quick example, very quick example of one of the uh, application on Earth to do a sustainable project, which is King Abdullah International Gardens. And then I will let you have a quick look on my winning design in North City Design uh, 2020 Challenge. So to start with the famous questions, I'm, I'm getting actually messages from too many people after, after the announcement of the uh, competition that why do we spend all of that money? Why, why, do we, why don't we just try to preserve Earth? Actually, in, nobody has ever said that, but there are few facts that everyone should know. Um, the global sea uh, level rise is, is, is actually increasing every day uh, in developing countries. 70% 70, uh, 70 of the industrial waste is, is actually uh, being dumped into the aquifers. And every day there are 2 million uh, tons of human waste is disposed in the water bodies. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, if, if we continue, if we continue doing this activity, um, this will be an, a cause of a one-way greenhouse effect, uh, heating the earth, uh, the surface of the earth enough to melt it. So actually, uh, it's exactly opposite of that. We're always uh, trying to promote how to serve, how to serve our home planet, how to use the renewable energy, how to use natural ventilation, how to use natural light. Uh, renewable energy is the key, actually, but. That doesn't mean that we should stop looking up to uh, space exploration because space exploration is just, it's not only to find a new home, but also to preserve our Earth. So some of the challenges that we uh, would be facing, facing on, on the space is actually, uh, I, I list actually, these, these are a few of them that uh, I was considering during my design, gravity, isolation, radiation, water extraction, depending on where you are, more Mars, oxygen production uh, and uh, power production. Gravity is actually a challenge, but I would, uh, I would see it as an advantage more than disadvantage because uh, you would weigh uh, less uh, on both moon and Mars, but uh, let's think it uh, that actually we are, uh, we're using a material that might be heavy during construction or 3D printing, but it's actually, uh, it's a good point that the material would be actually less during construction which will help the process of building any uh, infrastructure uh, in space. Um, isolation, actually, um, re I mean, no matter how you are trained, 
you will be facing changes of your behavior uh, among a group of people if, if you're actually in a small space over long term in, in a space. And to do and to overcome this problem, we'll have to look into a virtual reality platform and actually not every structure on space had to have to be a uh, parrot. We have also to, to, to let people, I mean, uh, astronauts and, and, and in, in the near future, I hope that enjoy the Martian uh, horizon, enjoy the, the view of the earth from the moon. We have to look for ways actually to let them live above ground. Um, radiation, uh, it goes, I mean, it's, it's very well known that it's, it's one of the most dangerous aspect uh, for travel to Mars when it's on, on a space station, for example, astronauts receive over 10 times the radiation they would have on Earth. Um, uh, for, for, for continuity of the, the space challenges, water extraction, it depends on where you are, as, as I just mentioned, oxygen, oxygen production, I would give a, a very good example, which is uh, latest uh, NASA research. And for the bar production, there are too many ways. Um, to, to overcome the uh, sustainability of having um, a power production for, for, for Mars, for example, since there is no uh, obstacle for, for the sunlight as much as we have here, of course, on Earth, the, uh, the efficiency of using solar power is, is, is way, way much better. And on the moon, there is a, a smart way to use helium-3 uh, for, uh, for the uh, fusion, I mean, to create fusion energy, to use the moon as an off-Earth step for space uh, exploration. As, as I mentioned in the beginning, biomimicry is one of the key, uh, key design uh, aspects that I always consider, uh, which is simply porous, the nature, blueprints, recipes that is, are, or that is already tested uh, here on Earth. We don't have to look for uh, uh, a new system and try to make it work. Why don't we look around us? A very famous example of the biomimicry is actually the pilot train design. They had turned up to the Kingfisher bird to come up with a solution for the thunder-like uh, cranking due to pressure differences uh, when the train is entering the uh, tunnel. Uh, there was like a hollow sound issue and they had come up with this brilliant idea, issue gun. I mean, look at the photos and think about it. Um, sustainability in space is not a question, as we all know, which means to use the outer space for peaceful purposes. And again, I would stress that this is not only for space uh, exploration, but to preserve our home planet. Examples to the long-term sustainability of the outer space activities would be contribution to the environmental monitoring, management of natural resources, satellite navigation, communication, and one of the most important aspects is the early warning system to help mitigate any potential hazards. Uh, that takes us to the term um, in situ resources utilization, which is to generate products with local material, either you are on the moon or the, on, on Mars, there are many of the material you can extract, can be extracted from the moon regolith or the Martian soil. Uh, I would also like to go very quickly for a quick comparison of what does um, in situ uh, resource utilization for both moon and Mars, uh, propellant, water, oxygen, and also metal can be extracted from the uh, lunar regolith hydrogen and oxygen from the water and lunar mineral building the all, all of the all of these are, are just building material that can, can actually be produced to to enable us for uh, to build a sustainable infrastructure by the actual material that are already there because shipping materials from earth would cost really billions and billions of dollars for mars there is a famous example that i actually admire which is a moxie uh, martian uh, oxygen uh, in situ resources utilization experiment, which is, uh, I would say, a car battery size device uh, that is able to produce oxygen, oxygen out of the Martian atmosphere uh, by electric, electro, electrochemically splitting the carbon dioxide the molecules. This is brilliant, and I believe it's already sent with NASA, NASA Perseverance uh, rover to test that experiment. I'm really waiting for the results. Quickly, uh, please, Michael, let me know if I'm running out of time. Uh, I would just quickly go for uh, one of the most interesting projects I have ever worked in. Uh, 
uh, as an example of building a sustainable structure here on Earth. This is King Abdullah International Gardens. Um, the, the quick idea of this project is to actually uh, uh, collect plants from all over the world and make them survive in the uh, harsh condition of the Saudi weather. I remember I've seen around uh, temperature in, in, in August, it, it reached up to 57 degree. And in, uh, in winter, it was around minus one early morning. So you can imagine the difference of temperature between uh, winter and, and summer. Um, the idea of the project to let, I mean, to have a different, um, uh, let's say, parts of each garden to let the plants survive from, from all over the world. So you can see here how big is the project. It was around two square million uh, meter. Uh, you can see the stages actually between 2000, the construction stages between 2009 and 2019. And the, the, the very good uh, example of sustainability is that we were actually during the excavation, we were taking these rocks and actually build, I mean, uh, building, building the parameter uh, of the wall, or let's say preparing for the parameter of the gardens with the local Riyadh stone. So uh, we're extracting the stone and, 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 and uh, re reusing it to build, to build the parameter of the wall to, to help uh, preserving the temperature needed and also to uh, avoid thermal bridging and to uh, reach up to the required due value of the walls. You can see here some perspective of the projects. Uh, these were 3D. Actually, uh, the project construction has stopped too many times during the last five years, but it's now again ongoing. Um, so that was the, um, the chill of the, of the facade. Uh, I believe we used uh, in, during the design and engineering uh, we used uh, uh, PTFE and ETFE material, depends on the condition of the plants that is needed. Um, and uh, finally, I would like to show you my winning design for uh, Mars City Design Urban Farming 2020 Challenge. I would use this chance to once again thank Vera for initiating this challenge for everyone to express their, uh, their designs. And uh, I would really recommend that you guys go and uh, head and check the Marsh City Hall of Fame uh, 2020. There are many amazing projects. And luckily, I believe that the access is still available until 22nd of December. So um, the idea of my project is actually, again, using the biomimicry to initiate a sustainable farm in Mars. Uh, the farm structure pattern was also was, was actually inspired by the lily pad iconic form to reflect the, the robust functional Vernoy structure and have a linear spine that have the surfaces from all around the circle. And it was actually divided into two parts, above ground and underground. Underground is actually to protect the plants from the extreme condition of Mars to let them survive. And the above ground, because again, we're not sending astronauts to Mars to bury them. They have, again, as I just mentioned, enjoy the, uh, I mean, live, live their life as much as they did on Earth. So here you, in the left side of the screen, you can see one of the reality platform uh, glass uh, lit enclosure that is designed for that purpose. Um, thank you so much. It was a great, great, great presentation. And we have many questions for you guys. I think you answered uh, some of the preset questions already. I think people, the viewers got a pretty good idea about what our lives could look like. Um, on spaceships and especially on uh, Mars and even the moon and why is sustainable infrastructure uh, is so important and how we can do it uh, in the future of living in space. But I would like you all maybe to try to answer uh, one of my questions and then we'll go to uh, the viewers questions, uh, which is how can space architecture and analog uh, space architecture influence not only the way we will live in space, but also the way we will live back here on earth. Uh, maybe Vera, you want to take this one? Sure. I think a lot of uh, analogs are being built and it's been a really interesting data collection experiment uh, towards like living together with the crew of six or, or you know, maximum nine people. But I, I would rather also include what is not, uh, what is not um, available in this kind of experiment, in this kind of habitat is that 
it has not been, you know, architects and artists uh, have been not really involved in, in this kind of analogs that are there uh, today. It's mostly about isolation, psychological experiment, how uh, these people end up having drama or not when they're in close together. Well, of course, uh, if you put the same people together in a luxury hotel in Malibu with the view to the ocean, uh, I think they will endure longer before they fight against each other. And uh, they will also have more basically sensitivity toward uh, being creative, toward uh, discovering and giving breakthroughs uh, in different science in their health and their food, their uh, everyday lives. Uh, so basically <clears throat> it's really important to focus on uh, the human center, but also the holistic aspects. This is why when we uh, created the Mars City design, it was, really to understand what it is the macro scale that will influence the micro scale so that the micro scale can feed back uh, how the city or the urban scale is designed. Many people ask like, why are you doing this fantasy instead of uh, you know, really solving the tomorrow's um, issues? Why are we not building domes like it's so solid and easy and geometrically uh, like very uh, solid and, and with no risk. So the answer to that is so many people know how to do that already. We want to be um, in the uh, innovation side where we wanna to push to the next level. How can this, you know, how can this become not just an analog, but also uh, a source of inspiration and advancement toward the new technology. For example, uh, when we insisted that we need a view on to live on Mars, it's just so bas basic, but it means that we have to invent the type of material we can find on Mars that can become locally manufactured uh, to become a glass, to become <laughs> towards the fast facade. That's just one example. So I'll let others um, answer that. Yeah. Thank you. I want to add a little bit, uh, Vikar. I think uh, space analogs uh, or uh, this uh, analog uh, uh, field of study uh, is very interesting because in one sense, it could be, it could act uh, perform as a, a, a very, uh, let's say, academic research uh, uh, opportunity. And on the other hand, it could be, it could act as a, a, a popular science that could influence and could give a lot of inspiration for, uh, of course, for, for, for children and uh, for, for people that usually don't have a, a, a natural a, a, a connection to the space realm. Uh, and we saw it in Dimas that uh, we, in a way, we, 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 it's a result of our, of our project, but it, it, it made people or children that uh, usually don't uh, put a lot of interest <clears throat> in, 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 uh, uh, in math or, 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 or let's say uh, STEM, uh, natural STEM uh, 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 fields. It gave them the opportunity to do it. So, uh, so for, for example, kids could, uh, uh, could, could, could write, write a poem or could invent uh, the philosophical uh, uh, aspects of living in space. And I think the, the, the analog uh, uh, field gave us this opportunity uh, to, to incorporate and to include as many people as possible. And this in a way gives us the leap that, that I think it's, it's, it's crucial for us to have because now space realm is, is, is just like, a, a, let's say airplanes in the beginning of the, of the of last century that it's connected immediately to bravery or being smart or, or even being a man, let's say. And, and, and now with analog sites uh, as, and, and we see more and more of them, I agree, uh, uh, we can break this uh, 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 definition and we can open 
the space we run for much greater people, much greater uh, 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 fields of uh, study. Thank you, and diversity. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, and I think Muhammad answered also this question in his presentation when he said that uh, whenever we talk about space, it is not because we plan to desert Earth altogether, oh, but sure. it's because we are trying to um, find ways not only for us to live in space and explore and, 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 and find new technology, but also to take that technology and innovation and bring it back here to Earth and help uh, many things. And I think they, we can see it, like Alona, you said that the area of, uh, for six Ramonauts uh, in your habitat is uh, about 60 square meters. And now during lockdown everywhere around the world, people in their very, very comfortable homes are struggling. So I think if we will learn to have um, solutions like the ones that you show, uh, that you showed us, uh, maybe we can even make our lives here um, uh, much more uh, bearable when we're stuck in lockdown. Um, and this leads me to one question from um, the audience uh, for Alon. Uh, Jay is asking, um, does the design, your design includes uh, private spaces for individuals or couples? And does it have emergency ability to close off some areas uh, in an emergency leak, for example? Hi, Jay. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Uh, the habitat uh, that I showed, that I presented, is uh, the working habitat. And it uh, uh, contains the, the laboratory, a uh, 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 lab, a clean lab, uh, it, uh, some kind of a control room in the medical area. Uh, the sleeping area uh, is another habitat, uh, either just like that or, or other one that somebody else, uh, uh, let's say, designed. And, and now we are working on the standardization of the con connectivity between a, a, a two, three, a, a, as many as possible habitats for, for, for this reason. So, we will have the working area, we will have the sleeping area, and they are not really should, they not really needs to be a, a, in in one volume. So we have a, a private area, but uh, they are separated from this uh, this habitat. They will have and they are uh, in another one. Of course, I, I will be more than happy to share uh, the plan for the overall uh, site uh, eventually. And, and, and thinking about couples, thinking about, uh, let's say, love, uh, it's, it's very important for us to, 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 to uh, we as humans, as, as a biological creature, we need it. Uh, uh, I have to say that we, had, we, we didn't really tackle this, uh, this, this issue yet. And of course, we have many, many more challenges to, to overcome. And again, this is the importance of, of this analog, uh, the field of study of of doing analog uh, sites. Uh, and, and definitely we need to collaborate with more and more sites. Uh, this is, I think, uh, this will give us the advantage of uh, really designing a real structure uh, eventually in space. Thank you, Alon. Uh, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. One question that I saw repeating, uh, people were asking about 3D printing, maybe 3D printing for Martian soil, uh, 3D printing from uh, lunar regolith. Uh, maybe uh, who wants to, to go for Muhammad? Did you did you experiment with three D printing in your projects or? Do you... Yes, actually, actually, I have I have done some research about three D printing, and uh, I was uh, I mean I came to know that actually the Martian soil does not does perform well under under uh, compression, but but not under tension. So I think it will have it would have to be supported by. Uh, some sort of, uh, I mean, if we were in Earth, it has to be supported with steel structure. But since that is something difficult to ship to Mars, I done some research that it can be actually supported with uh, uh, 3D nanotubes. It's it's very light structure and it can be mixed with the uh, Martian regolith, so it will be like concrete and stiffened with the with the with the uh, nanotubes to perform the material that is that can actually build. Uh, 3D printed structure uh, on, on, on space in general, either the moon or Mars. Thank you. Anyone else has a, a thoughts about 3D printing? Yeah, uh, 3D printing, of course, is a, I told you I, I can talk forever about these uh, 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 things, but 3D printing, of course, it's a very, uh, let's say, uh, hype and, and popular uh, 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 idea. Uh, uh, we overcome this challenge uh, 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 in, 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 we, we do it. We do it the other way around. Instead of printing from the from the bottom to the to up, 
we, we are taking the soil, we are taking the regolith of, of Mars, for example, and we pour it on the top of our uh, uh, habitat or uh, living space, and we, we pour it in a smart way uh, in some, in, inside some kind of uh, sacks or, or tubes, and, and we use the gravity uh, uh, and we are not uh, again. We, we are not using it against, but we are using the gravity <clears throat> as a force, as as a, as, as, uh, uh, um, as something that could help us. And uh, I think it it will uh, at the beginning, at the first stage, it, it will be. It, we will have to be smart enough to use the the the, the physical uh, of of Mars or the Moon, and not try to to go against it. Uh, just like in a way, it's just like prehistorical architecture. This is what is really interesting in, 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 in space architecture because we are building, a, 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 let's say, caves like, like the most a, a, a prehistorical a, a human. And, and in, we are incorporating like the most uh, hardcore uh, uh, high tech uh, 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 solution that, that are available. So the combination of of, of doing a pre-cycle stuff with, with the, uh, the most contemporary technology, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable uh, uh, in, the, in the potential of it. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I think we have just enough time, maybe three more minutes for each of you to kind of have uh, three total. Let's do it in one minute each. Uh, have like uh, final final thoughts. There were many many questions here that I apologize that we didn't get a chance uh, to answer. But maybe before everyone log off, uh, all the panelists can write uh, in the chat how it's best uh, to contact you. Um, so maybe uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, have some answers uh, to the the rest of the questions. I saw the chat was very very uh, alive today, and it was amazing to see. So uh, Vera, if you want to start us off with uh, like a final thought. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for including me. And there is a lot of work to do <laughs> in terms of our next five years. Uh, despite what happened this year, it was pretty uh, uh, difficult to uh, gather everyone, but the technology has been helping us a lot to uh, unite everyone in one destination. So it's so important to uh, think about you know, the fact that maybe we will not see a city scale uh, of Mars at my lifetime, at least, uh, but hopefully and everything we're doing today can build that path towards that uh, future history. So uh, I just want to share the last, uh, I guess, the last image uh, when you were uh, speaking about 3D printing. Uh, I guess also <clears throat> the expertise of Michal here as an architect that promotes, you know, a feminine architecture is for me, that's like uh, dancing with nature and uh, thinking about, you know, the force of nature that we could use. And that's how we actually have been living uh, with solar, with uh, wind power. And this is wind uh, 3D printing. So we are trying to find the, the way to uh, <laughs> excite uh, the natural phenomena and being able to deposit all the sand and the dust storm into this aerodynamic form that imitates the Barkin dunes on Mars. That's just an example to really uh, put the importance of context of Mars and its environment so that we as human beings uh, understand that uh, nature is there for us and there is a way to collaborate and not just uh, use and use and destroy. Thank you so much. Um, Alon, last uh, thought? Uh, I, think, I think what I like about uh, uh, space is the fact that it's uh, infrastructure it's an ancient, ancient infrastructure. Uh, uh, I don't know the the, the 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 North Star, for example, is an international navigation system, uh, uh, yeah, thousand years ago. So I think we need to uh, to promote the idea that we can really use space as some kind of face of infrastructure that that influence uh, us here on Earth in, in, in let's say in, in the most beautiful way. 
uh, in the most uh, collaborative way. And uh, I hope, uh, and this is what we are trying to do in Demos, I hope that, uh, that, that this uh, Rian could really pass the way for, for uh, international uh, collaboration, uh, not only in the space Rian. Thank you. And Mohammed? So actually, uh, I would like to advise every architect, I mean, there is the famous advice of think out of the box. Well, space architecture is already out of the box. So start, please. Um, it's, it's really interesting and it's helping humanity in general. Uh, and, and, and also, as I just uh, explained, uh, how biomimicry is important. There are many ideas all around us on Earth that is, that is actually helping us to go uh, for, for different ideas that will help all of us eventually. Uh, I have provided all the references of my presentation at the end, and I will be happy to receive any more questions after the uh, uh, the gathering, the meeting. So thank, thank you so much, all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm very interested in seeing this panel and how diverse it is from uh, backgrounds and from countries, uh, geographical uh, and everything. So just and in, in also seeing the similarities that everybody is talking about, that's very, very um, exciting for me personally. And I want to thank you all again for joining us. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, and Hien, you can uh, close off uh, this show. Thank you everyone for this amazing presentation. Vera Mohamed and Alon. Uh, I know we're over time now. The last traditional uh, group picture, please, if you would uh, put yourself on camera. And uh, I would also like to welcome you next week for series 32. Uh, success stories of mentees and mentors with uh, Nikita Chati from uh, India and Dr. Srimathai also from India. So stay tuned as soon as we log off here, you're able to sign up for next week's show. Thank you for your time, you. your uh, investment in this show. Thank you so much.